I'm here with uh, Sifu Lan Chi Fai, and and we're discussing the topic of what we believe is is Honga. Um, and before we get into that, I, I think it's important that we realise that these particular ideas and concepts are based on our understanding uh, of, of Honga and various discussions with other people. We're not making any claim that what we say here is necessarily comprehensive or agreed to by all of the Hongar community. And you're welcome to uh, make comments and suggestions uh, should you wish to do so. So in, in getting into uh, answering that question, the, the, the first thing that we want to do is to look at the, the background of Chinese martial arts because that's where Ungar fits. So if we consider the growth of Chinese martial arts throughout history, we can first of all uh, think that the, the basic historic needs of military and self-defense were the first things that were addressed. And, and this is typical of any country and any martial arts, even if we look at the US military today, it's a similar progression. And then the next step is um, there's a convergence of principles. So as well as military and self-defense, we now look at uh, the philosophy, the strategy on the military, military side, and we also get a convergence of uh, medicine and education coming in to, uh, to the martial arts. So how can, we, how can we be fit? How do we, how do we train these principles and educate people? So all of these things are, an, are a, a logical progression. And then there's an expansion of the benefits of whatever martial arts we're looking at. And that now considers the health side, the health maintenance and how we cultivate the individual with personal outlooks and maintaining fitness and being very effective in, in what it is that we're carrying out. And then the final thing that comes in is the cultural reflection. So there's an, an introduction of the cultural characteristics uh, of the people um, and also of the country. So the country begins to take pride in, in its own uh, expression of what that martial arts uh, actually is. Uh, as I said before, whether it be the today's modern military uh, or the, the ancient styles of Chinese Kung Fu or, or even the Japanese martial arts. So that's a fairly typical flow of what has happened uh, throughout the years. One so thing you think the is a, a, a flow is about uh, from the military side to the health and to the cultural side, right? Yes, that's exactly right. That's a fairly typical flow of, of what happens in most countries. If you look at mm. the military, today's modern military, whether it be in China or the US or Russia, it doesn't matter they have gone through that progression and, and health uh, is a very important part of it and, and how, mm. they've, how they've learned to look after themselves uh, under all sorts of situations to, to get improvements from, the, from their own body, not just how they apply martial technique. Yeah. Then so I, have a, I, have a, I have a question that, uh, did you heard it before? I think you, you surely about Wushu. In China, the wushu is a very famous, the so-called Chinese martial arts. But I want to clarify a, a bit more about the, the relationship between the Honga, as you said, and the wushu. They are both so-called Chinese martial arts, but I think many people may get confused. I would say that uh, the new style of the wushu in films has confuse people's perception here. So Kung Fu, it looks more likely a uh, gymnastic with uh, a bandy source, 
And on the other hand, the, the traditional Honga of stances and forms sometimes are even more confusing to people because it is not the same as the film. People seem to, uh, I mean, they don't understand the difference. So what, what do you think about the, the Wushu and Honga? Yes, that, that's true. The <clears throat> There is a uh, misunderstanding today uh, of what these two things are. Many people think they're the same thing. But if you look at where they came from, they're, they're two very different things. Um, the the mm. wushu of today, and I call it the new, the new wushu. Wushu simply means martial arts. Um, if you consider what happened in China during the Cultural Revolution, which was not that long ago, 60s and 70s, the, the whole culture changed. All of the traditional uh, beliefs and so on were, were discontinued and, and thrown into um, disuse. But the martial arts has always been, uh, been seen as something belonging to China. So the, there was a new martial art that developed in the 70s and it was called uh, Wushu. And it was primarily a sport emphasizing gymnastics and the mm. aesthetics of bodily movements and so on. Um, and if you look at uh, the, the new Wushu today, you will see that all the participants have similar body shape. They're, they're all similar height, similar weight, similar age group. Um, and what they learn is mastery of the art of complex aesthetic movement. That's my description. Um, and yes, it's very difficult to do. And I have a lot of admiration for the people that do this. It takes a lot of training, but there's little to no focus on the martial application uh, of martial arts. It, it's almost as though all the martial aspects have been taken out of it. Um, and you will see very few active participants of the new Wushu beyond their 30 age group, simply because it's, it's extremely demanding and it requires a lot of energy to continue to do it. Mm. And it's, it's actually promoted as an international entertainment focused sporting event. So it's, it's not really uh, what I would call a martial art. It has some martial aspects, some recognition of certain martial aspects, but there's no real martial meaning or spirit in, inside the, the new Wushu. That's my observation. And in contrast, if you look at traditional Honga, you're looking at something with centuries of evolution. Um, it's been passed down for many generations and its emphasis is fighting and defense. It's, it's practiced by all age groups and body shapes. And it requires mastery of very deep and historic purpose, uh, economy of movement and its effectiveness in, in fighting and, and usefulness. It has a very deep focus on martial application and you even see many people today, uh, older, older age participants beyond their 70s. Um, mm. If I look at my uh, Sifu and Sigong, in, well into their 80s and, and 90s, uh, they're, they're practicing this. And it's promoted as a practical art for martial capability and also of character development. So, so these are the main differences I see between mm. traditional Honga and the new Wushu. The new Wushu looks very spectacular if you watch it because there's, there's a lot of acrobatics and gymnastics involved compared to traditional Honga. So it has a lot of appeal uh, when, when people watch it. So does that answer and the then, And then you can see the, the Olympics games as one of the, the, the sports is new wushu. Yes, that's exactly so they, right. They standardize the form and then 
make it very nice. Yes, uh, I, I see in the future it will evolve as a Olympic or even an Asian Games sport where people can judge and they'll all be doing the similar things and um, they'll, they'll, they'll be judging who can do it better. But I, don't, I cannot see a situation where it's going to include people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. Yes, yeah, you, you can ask a 70 years old guy to, to join the Olympic game. So that's why they will focus on the young people. That's right. And they train very hard with this yeah. kind of activities. Yeah, but yeah. at least I think it is good to, to show the the um, significance of what they will learn. I mean, the, the traditional Hong guy, if they are interested or understand the path of long journey, it may take it's their whole life. Because per personally, I, I, I learned for 25 years of Hong Kai and I, I, I watch a lot of movies and films about the Kung Fu. I feel like personally the, the 1970s or, or before that is more likely about uh, traditional martial arts. Yes, and and, and, and I, I, don't, I don't mean the, the wushu is good or bad, but it, it means just different. That's exactly right. It, it's a yeah. new martial art for today's uh, modern society yes. and a lot of people like that, younger people like that. Um, right. So it's fine and I have, I have no objections to it unless people start to call it traditional Kung Fu and then I object right. because right. it is not. Yes. <laughs>